You're hiding something from me, Jacinth declared. Hiding? I asked, for offended. Me? Never. I am in a profession where truth matters more than anything else. Jacinth snorted. Sure, whatever. She took a sip of her beer, then looked at it appreciatively. Good stuff. What, you're not going to complain about how toxic it is? How you're just taking a few cycles off your life with every bottle? The farcive diplomat shrugged. Life is short. I could stand it being a bit shorter. I raised my own in a mock toast. Now you're thinking like a human. We sat in companionable silence for another few moments. The bar around us was lively, full of politicians and lawyers ready to cut loose after a day of smoozing and deal-making. Unfortunately, as mere visitors to the capital, both Jensen and I found it lacking in our species' preferred recreational beverages. I was happy when they finally added beer to the rotation last week. I was less happy that they exclusively stocked PBR. Amazing, isn't it? I said. All these species, humans, Forsyth, a dozen others just in this room, and we all arrived here, visitors to this planet, simply because we happened to not be the first to discover wormholes. How so this planet is at the centre of a nexus, Jisam said. Space around here has got more holes than a Twillian Burrow. I raised an eyebrow. Twillian Burrows have a lot of holes, she explained. Go to guess that one myself, I said with a worried chuckle. She shrugged. Hey, you never know. You humans, you know, so late to the galactic community and yet your wormhole is what? Three light minutes from your home world? Five light days, I muttered. Look, we had some other research going on. So you ignored the gift at your doorstep? Only humans. Jess had smiled all too smugly. It was an argument we'd had a hundred times. At this point, it was almost a comfort to go through the motions, even if me and my species ended up on the losing end of it. But today, in light of recent news... Well, I said vaguely, our species has some other benefits, as it were. We may be slow, but we're persistent. You are hiding something, Jessam declared. She sat up in her seat and studied my face. What do you know, Marcos? What have you done? Oh, I don't know, I replied. Even if I did know something, there's a chance it's, you know, highly classified and I'd be killed if I told you. I knew fully that my own boss had personally told me to leak this information, in some way or another. Aha, uh -huh, Jessam said, unbelieving. She'd known me long enough to instantly detect the sarcasm in my voice. Humans and their secrets, she sighed. It's not a secret per se, I said. Think of it as bait and me dangling it in front of you for my own entertainment. Jessam pouted. Jerk? I come from a family of jerks and a world of jerks, I said. You know, I ought to visit them one of these days. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, your family's on planet? That's cool. We can show them the size if you'd like. Her tone was friendly, but I could tell she was still suspicious. And rightfully so. Oh no, I said, smiling. No, they're still on Earth. My mother is terrified to death of spaceships. No, I'd have to go to Earth to see them. Jess Amph narrowed her eyes. Her expression is remarkably human for being an entirely different species. Have you been reading children's stories again? No way you can beat a minimum five light day speed limit. Not children's stories, never on Earth. I think we've collectively dreamed of FTL travel since the 20th century. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like a depressingly long time to fixate on a fantasy. That's why I call them children's stories. Only children would bother to not live in the real world. Who says it's not the real world? I laid the challenge on the table lightly, but I couldn't keep the pride from my voice. You... Just have dropped her voice to a whisper. Humanity, you've... you've done it? Perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe we did. She stared deeply into my eyes, searching for truth. She found it. Marcos, she hissed. What the hell are you doing spreading that around in public? That stuff should be a top military secret. If other species find out... You know I have to report this, right? If they found out, I knew. We're counting on it, I said confidently. We won't report anything officially, of course, but rumours... Rumours can be worth their weight in gold. What do you mean? Think about it, I said. We're still young, and there are about ten times as many of any other species out there. We're sitting ducks, easy prey. Unless... Just have leaned back in her chair. Unless everyone's afraid you've got some secret technology that could fight them off. But you do. I shrugged. And we could prove it in war, a great cost of material and life. We'd rather not. 
Not yet. You humans. Insane. Perhaps not so insane after all, I said. After all, our science fiction is that much more realistic now. You're not that sane. Fantasy is still out the window. So how do you do it, anyway? How do you break the one rule of physics that has never been broken? Now that must remain a secret, I said. I felt a tingle of lightning at my fingertips. A Benny held back spark of magic. But perhaps it's all a uh, matter of belief. 